Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein. This is part one of OJ Simpson and the Mafia. We're going to do three kind of uh, mini episodes, quick hitter-ish, on um, reflecting on OJ's many ties to the underworld that I don't think anybody really knew, uh, or maybe they still don't know. Everybody associates him, obviously, with the, the alleged murder of his wife and Ron Goldman, but... Um, I don't think people realize that way before that he has been or had been at the very least dovetailing with very dangerous criminals, members of organized crime, uh, mafia figures from multiple crime families, uh, both allegedly Italian, Russian, Armenian. Um, and this was really no secret to law enforcement. A lot of this started to come out when, when, uh, his trial happened in 1995. But today we're going to talk about two narcotics investigations that OJ was at the center of in the 1970s. None, uh, neither were federal. They were both, um, one was Buffalo Police Department, one was New York State Police. And this is when OJ Simpson was the best running back in football, uh, running behind the electric company offensive line the Buffalo Bills going over 2,000 yards, wowing crowds everywhere, becoming a corporate pitch man. Um, everybody loved O.J. Simpson. And in Buffalo, he was a mover and shaker. And a lot of guys he was moving and shaking with were at least suspected to be mob affiliates um, and guys that had connections to the Chidaro crime family, Mag or sorry, the Chidaros and the Magadino crime family. Um, so a lot of it starts uh, when he gets to Buffalo and he starts kind of ingratiating himself. He won the Heisman Trophy at USC and he goes to Buffalo and it's, you know, it's, uh, he, I don't think he liked it because he was coming from you know the West Coast. It was dark and dreary. But uh, he found a nightlife and he found a, a fast crowd to hang out with. He quickly became best friends with a, a guy that was a good looking uh, ex-military, uh, brilliant businessman, savvy, uh, well-spoken. His name was Mike Militello, became uh, OJ's best friend uh, in Buffalo that wasn't uh, on the Buffalo Bills. And Militello was a guy that owned clubs and real estate and restaurants and um, the federal government and local state authorities thought Militello was dealing a lot of cocaine. Um, that was never proven, has never been proven. He's always denied it. But his place of business was Mulligan's. It was a super trendy hot nightclub. It's where all the rich and famous in Buffalo hung out, all the, you know, most uh, affluent members of society, uh, celebrities that were coming through town, any actors or musicians or athletes, they'd all end up at Mulligan's. It was a big hangout for O.J. Simpson, um, and it was a big place where uh, there was a lot of drug activity, and the Authorities always try to tie Militello as the proprietor of Mulligans to that narcotics activity, profiting from it or facilitating deals at his uh, his place of business. They were never successful. He's always denied having anything to do with illegal drug activity. I know he's admitted to uh, in interviews that uh, him and OJ partook in cocaine use, but denied uh, any you know distribution activities. It was a place that a lot of gangsters hang out at, uh, hung out at. It was a place that uh, attracted an underworld crowd as well as that celebrity crowd. And in 1974, there was a famous uh, Buffalo mob murder that took place there. Frankie D'Angelo was a member of the Magadino crime family, low-level uh, burglar, racketeer, wasn't paying tribute to the guys he was supposed to, and got gunned down coming out of a uh, mulligan. So this was a you know a place that had a, a it, it was a lot of it was very buzzy. It was a place that everybody knew. It was a place that, you know, where you were going to be and be seen in Buffalo. And that was a uh, OJ's kind of the center of his social universe was at Mulligan's. He also spent a lot of time at a place called the Executive uh, Inn, which was out by the airport. Uh, it was also right next to or part of the Playboy Club. Uh, that had a 
reputation for being connected to the Magadino crime family. Uh, the Tadaros were known to hang out there, both Joe Pizza Tadaro, the, the reputed, uh, never proven to be a fact, but the reputed Mafia Don of Buffalo right now. And his father, the his his predecessor, um, Lead Pipe Joe, his dad, uh, used to hold court at the Executive Inn all the time. I was at the Playboy Club a lot, and OJ was there a lot. And again, a lot of drugs were, were uh, going through there. And the belief from authorities is that OJ was facilitating brokering drug deals with the this crowd that was you know very affluent and very uh high end crowd celebrity crowd but most importantly for OJ it was uh, an athlete crowd they thought he was uh not just pumping the drugs to the the celebrities coming in town but was providing cocaine and other drugs to members of all the professional sports teams in Buffalo, the Sabres, the Bills, and at that time, the Buffalo Braves of the of the NBA at that time, which eventually became the Clippers, I believe. Um, but this is what was investigated. Again, nothing ever happened. He was also at that time, OJ, another a third place that he was spending a lot of time at that had alleged drug activity and a lot of gangsters hanging around. Buffalo was a, a, a place called uh, Butch... Casey's Nickelodeon, um, another, it was a very popular night spot. Butch Casey uh, was a, a moniker. His real name was Kazmir Sucharski. He was from Eastern Europe, came over, kind of became a club owner, reputed drug dealer, gangster. Um, and Butch Casey was a, a frequent social companion of O.J. Simpson. Again, investigated in a lot of those uh, probes that didn't end up going anywhere. I'll end this little part of the story with something that you could either take away saying that he was guilty as all hell or that he was very lucky. Um, and what is known is that there was a raid on Mike Militello's apartment, um, which was a kind of a, a penthouse apartment and a high rise uh, in downtown Buffalo, it was a place known for a lot of after parties after Mulligan's Brick Bar shut down. And uh, his his place was raided. I believe Butch Casey was caught up in that raid. OJ left the premises about 90 seconds uh, before the authorities hit the door. There were informants telling these authorities that Militello had gotten a tip off from one of his connections in law enforcement and that he had left and told OJ to leave. We'll never know. Militello uh, has been free of any of those allegations for quite a while. This all came out in the Buffalo uh, media in um, the 1990s when, when OJ was going on trial for murder. The Militello did a number of interviews about this. Uh, he's since become like a, a very successful restaurateur. He brought, was known for bringing uh, California cuisine to Western New York. I believe his one of his places was a, a Bijan Cafe. Excuse me, Bijou Cafe. I apologize if I'm messing it up, but uh, pretty legendary. He's a pretty legendary figure. He's 76. He's still alive. Uh, I'm guessing he will be or was at OJ's funeral and wake. But that's part one of OJ Simpson and the Mafia. Check back for part two, where we're going to dive into alleged racketeering activity being conducted by O.J. Simpson and none other than Robert Kardashian, the patriarch of the Kardashian clan. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, we're out.